Hey everybody, welcome back to the On Shape series. I am Mr. Redmond. Today we're going to talk about sketch constraints. This is a step in the understanding of CAD modeling and on shape that's going to take you from being pretty good to kind of closer to a master. When you understand how constraints work and when they're going to be most helpful, um, they will make your sketches and your parts just start whizzing by. They really set the construction apart from others. And it takes some sort of complicated shapes and makes them a little bit easier to work with. And you can st really start to, uh, to manipulate these sketches the way you want. So I'm going to make a quick sketch. Eventually, we're going to make this device right here. This is called a pair cam. It is a cam which actuates um, some levers, and uh, it requires a few constraints. So we're eventually going to make this, but right now I'm just going to show you um, how some of these sort of uh, constraints work. Um, I'm going to do this by uh, drawing a couple lines. These are all, I'm going to draw them on purpose, kind, kind of wonky. So I'm going to go across like this, um, and then up a little bit over here, and then over here, and straight up like this, why not? And I'm going to hit escape. So I'm, I have these lines, they're completely random. Um, what's nice about constraints is that you can draw something incorrectly and then fix it. Uh, some of these constraints will happen automatically. Uh, you've seen this already, I'm going to draw a couple lines real quick. When you draw something horizontal, completely horizontal, you see that the, um, the line is dashed and a little lighter in color. And that's because it is currently locked into the horizontal. Uh, the same happens when it's totally vertical. It's locked into place. And it also will um, lock into other... Uh, portions as well, like this is going to come up to this axis and it locks in place with the origin and the axis and it's vertical. And you'll see that it's just a line. But this thing pops up. See this little dot right here? This little um, graphic tells you that this is actually vertically constrained. This is a constraint. If you click on it, um, you can even move that around. That's not important. But this is a constraint. This keeps this line vertical always. So this is what we're going to be talking about today, these constraints. And so in this case, this line, if I wanted it to be horizontal, you click on it, it turns it gold. Um, I can choose a constraint and make it horizontal. I can change the properties of this line. I don't have to redraw the line. Not that drawing this line was a pain, but I can change the properties of this line. You already know how to change its dimensions. What if we always also wanted to change other aspects about it? So let's say we want to make this one a horizontal line. I can come up here to this list of constraints right here. Up here on the on the right is this list of different constraints. Some of these are words you're going to understand and some of them will be a little bit uh, new. So I wanna make this a horizontal line. So I'm gonna click here on horizontal and you'll see that it will lock in place on the horizontal, just like that. It might not be in the right place. You can always change where it is. And you see now there is this horizontal uh, line uh, right, that, right here that shows you that it now has a horizontal constraint. I believe you could also pick it up and move it if you'd like, but it's also going to change the properties of some of these other lines, like the size. Um, you can lock this one in place here on this axis with the coincidence. Uh, you can click on it and then the axis and it will lock it in place right onto that uh, axis as well. Pretty cool. So now this has loaded with constraints. You have the escape keys. Check it out. So you see it has these other um, 
constraints in it uh, locked in place. This is a horizontal line, and it's also a coincidence with the axis. This line is vertical. It has no other constraints but that. Now, let's say you did not want it to be in coincidence with the uh, with this axis. You can click on the constraint and hit the delete key and make that go away. So now it is no longer uh, in uh, coincidence with the axis. Um, let's change some other lines. We can make this line and this line perpendicular to each other. Let's click on that one. Perpendicular is right here. Uh, you should click on the lines first so you don't accidentally make other things perpendicular to each other. So if I click them like that, you see that the, uh, they're now uh, perpendicular and that constraint shows up right here as well. Very cool. Um, there's some other cool constraints that are pretty helpful here. If I want to make this line and this line parallel, I can do that right here. Click on the parallel uh, button and that uh, moves that around. And you see how the, um, the lines move around when you change their constraints and that might prove to be a problem sometime. Maybe you have this bottom line exactly where you want it. So I'm going to undo that one real quick. Uh, so I, let's say I wanted this here. I want this line to not move. I can click on it and add another constraint, of course. And that would be the fix constraint. That is going to fix it in place, you see. It won't move. This one is parallel or perpendicular to that line. It is horizontal and it is now fixed in place. So if I want to take this line now and make it horizontal or parallel, I can do that and it won't move. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to click on this one. Just added all sorts of constraints to this bottom line. I'm going to make it now parallel. Bam. Now it moved and not this bottom line because the bottom line is now fixed in place. Um, another constraint that I can add, I can change this line. Uh, to make it vertical. It's right now it's vertical, uh, but I can also make it uh, equal in length to this one. And now it gets a little bit bigger. So these are now equal lines, equal sized lines. I'm not sure exactly why that would be helpful. This is in this exact case, but it is pretty cool. Um, there are a few other neat uh, constraints here that are pretty interesting. Midpoint locks something into the midpoint of the device or the, the shape. If it's a uh, circle or a rectangle or another line, you can lock it into the middle of the line. Normal is pretty cool. It will take a round object and a straight object and line them up to be perfectly perpendicular. Uh, symmetric does exactly what it sounds like. It makes two things. Uh, symmetric uh, relative to a, to a line. Uh, tangent is sort of the opposite of normal, where it takes a flat surface and lines it up on uh, to a circle um, as a tangent. And concentric lines up uh, circles together so that they are um, perfectly centered on each other. So that being said, let us make this pair cam real quick. Uh, it requires a few changes or, and a few um, uh, constraints that we'll have to add in later. So uh, looking at this pair cam, you see that here, this is a round portion right here and there's a round portion right here. So that's going to be two different circles. Um, this one will be a uh, 1.25 radius circle, so a, a, a two and a half inch um, diameter. And this top one here is a radius of 0.5, therefore this circle here would be one inch. Since this is inches, I'm going to change my workspace units to inches. Uh, let us make some circles in the sketch. Going back into sketch one, uh, let's 
make a couple circles. I'm going to make them in sort of random areas uh, so that I can show you exactly how um, the constraints are working. So we have a circle. This one needs to be 2.5 inches in diameter. We have one more circle going to go up here, and we're going to make this one one inch in diameter. Great. So uh, you can see that they wanted to do some constraints right away, but we didn't want it to do that because I want to show you how they work exactly. Uh, so let's add some constraints here. Let's um, make the bottom circle uh, coincident with the vertical axis. So it's going to scooch it over just a little bit. And then we can do the same thing with the a uh, smaller circle will make it coincident with the vertical axis as well. So now these are lined up perfectly on that axis. We can also try um, a tangent. We're going to lock these into place. Uh, at least I, I, maybe we won't do tangent yet. So this needs to be uh, 1.75 inches away. So the center of this circle and the center of this circle need to be 1.75 inches away. So we'll add a dimension there between the center here and the center here. Need to be 1.75. Hit enter, and you see that they get real close to each other. Nice. Um, perfect. So. We need to add these flat sides to our pair cam. And we're going to do that with a line. And these lines don't have to be any one place. I'm going to draw a line right here. Hit escape. Draw another line on the other side, like this. Now, we need these to be attached. These lines need to be attached to these, both of these circles via tangents. I'm going to click on the tangent constraint. I'm going to click on the line here, and then I'm going to click on the smaller circle. You see that it moves over and lines up into that smaller circle. I'm going to do the same thing one more time with the bigger circle. Click on the line, and then click on the uh, larger circle, and you see that it is now a tangent uh, on both circles. I'm going to do that one more time, hit escape a few times so that your tools go away. So I click on um, this line and then the smaller circle, and click on tangent, and it scoots it over, and then uh, do the same one more time with the bigger circle, hit tangent, and it moves it into place. But if you um, have your circles moving around for some reason, possible that you did not uh, make them uh, coincident with the axis, you can always fix them in place uh, so that they stop moving and only the lines move. That is another fix for that situation. Um, it looks like we have one small circle, or sorry, one small square that we need to put in here. It is a 0.125 or an eighth of an inch in uh, size. So I'm going to put it right here in the center. This one doesn't require any constraints. Um, uh, enter, enter. And uh, now we have a little square notch right there. So of course, this does not look exactly correct. And that is because we need to trim some bits off. We're going to use the scissor trim tool to knock out a lot of this. Uh, we will get rid of the top portions and then the bottom portions of the line, a little excess. Um, we can do the same thing with these parts of our uh, circle here and here and here. And now it's gone. And now, look at this. Now this looks like a pair cam. You see that it's a 0.125 inch um, Extrusion. So I'm going to, to finish my sketch. I'm going to go out here, look at it, 
looks really cool to me. Um, and now let's uh, click on our face that we want to extrude and then extrude it one inch is far too much. So let's type in 0.1. Enter. And now we have pair cam. Uh, this sort of cam is a device that would actuate uh, uh, something else. So this would rotate and push. This little lobe right here would push on something. Um, a pear-shaped cam is similar to what is found in your car's engine that runs the valves that let gases in and out of the cylinders. Uh, pear cams are very popular uh, for uh, valves in a lot of applications. At any rate, here's a pair can, and that's how you use constraints.